there are moments in the day I just need to cook or finish a task, and my daughter clings to me like I'm her whole world. So I turn on the screen to keep her busy, just long enough to do my job. And instantly, the guilt sets in. That guilt led me to search for answers to the questions behind it through real science. I wanted to know, why are experts cautious about screen time? What does it really do? Is all screen time the same? And how can we reduce its impact when we do use it? Hi friends, welcome to Science Sense Parenting, where love and science meet. I'm Sherry, a full-time mom and science enthusiast. In today's video, I'm sharing the answers I found to the questions I had. So, stick around. Let's start with the basics. The American Academy of Pediatrics advises no screen time under 18 months except video calls. For 18 to 24 months, only co-viewed and high-quality content. And for ages 2 to 5, limit to one hour per day of high-quality, interactive, age-appropriate, and co-viewed media. So, why the caution? Because in these early years, their brains are in hyper-growth mode, forming millions of neural connections every second. They need real-life interaction like eye contact, touch, movement, and playful back and forth to build skills like language, focus, emotional regulation, and motor skills. Real-world play engages all the senses, and that's what truly fuels brain development. Screens, by contrast, are passive and fast. They rely mostly on visuals and sound. How does screen time affect a toddler's development? Well, it turns out it can impact nearly every area, from attention and language, to sleep, social skills, even posture. Let's break it down together. Too much screen time can alter brain structure and function, especially white matter, which supports language, attention, executive functions like self-control and decision-making. The prefrontal cortex, responsible for planning and behavior regulation, is also impacted. And fast, flashy content can overstimulate the dopamine system, possibly increasing the risk of addictive behaviors. And here's something else research shows. More screen time often means less real interaction, and that's where kids really build vocabulary and communication skills. Studies have linked too much screen time to delayed expressive language, reduced verbal interaction, and difficulty following conversations or read social cues. Because here's the truth, language develops best through real back and forth interaction. Screens just cannot offer that. And when toddlers are frequently exposed to fast-paced media, they may start showing shorter attention spans, difficulty focusing on slow-paced real-world activities, higher risk of ADHD-like symptoms, more meltdowns, and less emotional control. Overstimulation just makes it harder for them to manage frustration, wait their turn, or stay calm when something doesn't go their way. Screen time can also show up in their behavior. Research links it to more tantrums, less patience, and a stronger reliance on screens to soothe themselves. It can create a pattern where they start expecting instant gratification, which makes boredom or frustration really hard to handle. And what about sleep? Screens before bed can suppress melatonin due to blue light, disrupt falling or staying asleep, lower sleep quality, which affects cognitive and emotional development the next day. Now let's talk about movement. When toddlers spend too much time sitting with a screen, they're missing out on physical play, and that matters. Long screen time limits movement, motor skill development, and sensory exploration, physical activity needed for strength, coordination, and balance. And yes, that's been linked to poor posture, eye strain, reduced fitness, and even increased risk of childhood obesity. Finally, when screens replace face-to-face -face interaction, toddlers may struggle with eye contact, reading facial expressions, empathy and emotional turn-taking, building connection through co-regulation and shared play. If you notice sleep problems, language delays, attention issues, or behavior concerns, 
screen time may be part of the puzzle. These signs often appear when screen use is frequent, unsupervised, or replaces other key activities. It's not just about how much screen time, but what kind of content and how it's used. Passive screen time like fast-paced shows with little or no interaction are linked with reduced engagement, slower language development, and a habit of instant gratification. It's most harmful when it's long, unsupervised, and overstimulating. Interactive screen time like video calls with family or watching a show together while discussing it can support language growth, social connection, and real-life communication skills. Co-viewing also matters. Sitting with your child, narrating, asking questions, it turns screen time into bonding time. You help them learn, feel seen, and connect what they're watching to real life. When screen time is a lifesaver, the key is using it wisely. Here's how. Keep it short and supervised. Make sure it doesn't replace sleep, play, or connection. Choose slow, age-appropriate content. Go for shows designed for toddlers that invite interaction. Co-view and engage. Ask questions, label emotions, connect what they see to real life. Balance with off-screen play. Include physical activity, reading, and sensory experiences that provide rich learning experiences. Avoid screens one hour before bed. Blue light can interfere with melatonin production and sleep quality. Use screens intentionally for specific moments like cooking, not as a full-time distraction. Create screen-free zones, especially at meals and bedtime, to support healthy routines and ensures time for social connection. If this helped you feel a little more informed and a little less guilty, please like, subscribe, and share your screen time story in the comments. Let's support each other with science, grace, and zero judgment. On good days, when I need to get things done, I reach for simple screen-free alternatives that keep my daughter close and engaged, like water play near me on a waterproof mat, play dough or sensory bins in her high chair, stickers or magnets on the dishwasher, pretend cooking with a bowl and spoon. They're not magic. Some days she still clings. But these little ideas help her stay curious and calm, spark creativity, and build independent play. And they give me a moment to focus without feeling overwhelmed. As parents, we carry guilt like a backpack full of bricks. But screams aren't the evil. If turning on the TV helps you through a tough moment, that's okay. Research shows that occasional, age-appropriate, co-viewed screen time isn't harmful in the long run. What matters most isn't perfection, it's the love, presence, and connection you offer your child throughout the day. Science matters, but so does real life. Thanks so much for being here today and for all the love and effort you pour into your little one. You're doing amazing. Until next time, take care and keep shining.